Hi, hi everyone. This is Ed Inwaka, CEO of Red Swan. I am very happy to be here because we're going to talk about a brand new asset we just brought to our platform. Uh, we are happy to announce uh, the Apollo Apartments in Edmonds, Washington, in the Seattle, Washington community. Uh, this apartment building is being built by Blackfish Capital, and we have none other than the two founders of Blackfish Capital here, Johnny Vong and Andrew Miller. So um, welcome, Johnny. Welcome, Andrew. I would like to just welcome you to our show and uh, um, really want you to talk about your project, know you guys a little bit better, and uh, also get to know the project a little better. Welcome. Glad to be here. So let's just jump right into it. I mean, you guys have been together for how many years and what kind of, what, where do you live in the Seattle, Washington area? So um, I started Blackfish Capital about five years ago and uh, the company focuses mainly on new construction projects in the Pacific Northwest, ranging from multifamily, retail, commercial condominiums, townhomes, and Andrew and I got together about three years ago uh, and worked on various projects over that time. Uh, but about a year ago, we decided to kind of join forces to work on the Apollo project. Uh, Andrew's got a wide breadth of experience working in projects of similar size and complexity. He can kind of talk about his, uh, his experience here. Oh, well, happy to do so. Uh, so uh, I've been working in real estate development in the greater Seattle area for about 24 years now. And everything from some single family, a lot of townhomes, uh, many mid-rises, and a couple of high-rises thrown in there. Um, and uh, uh, current rough tally is I've been involved with about $1.5 billion worth of uh, projects around here. And uh, uh, knowing that this interview is coming up, I haven't done this in a while, I totaled up the projects and I've done 50 projects in the greater Seattle area as of, as of today. Wow, first of all, 1.5 billion and also 50 projects in the same area. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, that tells us that you have a lot of experience in the marketplace. Uh, and so that kind of leads me to my, my first question. Tell me a little bit about the market uh, for apartment buildings in the Edmonds and greater Seattle, Washington area. Uh, how's it thriving? What's going on right now? Where do you see the demand? That's a great question, Edward. I think um, in spite of some of the narrative that's going around about Seattle as a city. Uh, in 2020, in this last year, Seattle actually was the one of the fastest growing largest city in the United States. So we've had the largest number of in-migration out of any large city. On top of that, we've seen the largest number of tech jobs, high paying jobs of an excess of six figures in this area. So, you know, we kind of combine those two factors of large population growth large high wage growth jobs, there's an abundance of demand for quality multifamily projects. And as people are kind of balancing the hybrid work from home uh, demand, there's been a larger demand for quality multifamily projects in suburban areas, such as Edmonds, Washington, where the Apollo projects are. And, and all that to yeah, that, you know, I was, uh, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Andrew. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I know we have a delay here. Um, so uh, I built several projects uh, in the in the downtown core, and uh, it's interesting. You, you can read it in the paper that uh, uh, I would say there's some leadership challenges in Seattle. And uh, the great part about Edmonds is, um, you know, it's it's a further out uh, city, uh, but we're also building a light rail uh, infrastructure around here, and actually. If you drive up the I-5 corridor, uh, northward, our direction, uh, there's a lot of excitement building around that. So there's a lot of migration starting to move up towards, towards Edmonds and our uh, abutting cities, Shoreline and uh, Linwood. But uh, the dream of being able to access all that Seattle has, its art scenes, its, uh, its restaurants, uh, all the activities you can do there, but yet hop a light rail up and live in Edmonds, where you can get more for your dollar, uh, maybe feel a little bit safer, more space to, to get around. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect time to be in Edmonds. Well, that is awesome to hear. You know, I was doing a little bit of reading about uh, the Apollo uh, in Edmonds, Washington, and I'm seeing that 
there's a very high demographic of homeowners. 70% of the population are homeowners, where 30% are renters. That seems like that will be some pretty good uh, statistics for building apartments. What are your thoughts on that? Um, that's, you hit it right on the head there, Edward. So uh, because Edmonds is such a desirable uh, bedroom community with a quality school system, access to major job centers, uh, access to major roads and freeways, people want to be in Edmonds, but there just isn't enough inventory or product out there. So by uh, building the Apollo projects, uh, we're meeting an immense demand, and we feel confident that it will at uh, least quickly and hit the, the rents that we're asking for. And, and I'm going to jump in and say uh, downtown Edmonds, which is very nearby, very cute downtown, one of my favorite places to grab breakfast or do a breakfast meeting or a lunch meeting, and just a few blocks up from the Edmonds uh, waterfront, uh, where that's quite nice in itself, and you can also hop a ferry over to one of the islands. Uh, wish I could show it to you. Um, yeah, but I think we've got some marketing videos on, on our Red Swan listing that kind of illustrate uh, kind of the project, but also the general area and how it is a waterfront community with a lot of great parks and amenities for people to walk around. Yeah, it's a beautiful area and definitely sounds like it's up and coming. Uh, you know, you guys came together um, because you both have, you know, strong skill sets in multifamily and real estate in general. But what's your, you know, combined passion for building the Apollo in that marketplace? I mean, what's really, you know, getting you excited about this project over the other projects you've done in the past? That's a great question, Edward. I mean, there's a lot of things that get me excited about this project, but I think one of it is uh, it's really about meeting the demands of the market. And I think we've designed a really great product and building here. As I mentioned, you know, there's these new work from home hybrid demands for the current, for the current uh, workforce here. And we've designed Apollo where, you know, many of the units will have a dedicated alcove uh, office and desk, as well as access to fiber optic high speed internet cable. And I think, you know, in addition to the, you know, the great amenities that we've designed, such as, you know, head spa, courtyard, roof, uh, sun deck. I would say we also kind of Amazon the building, right? So in addition to people, you know, having a hybrid work as well as school lifestyle, everyone's getting everything delivered. So it's not just your standard dry packages. We're also talking cold and frozen storage for those types of delivery. So we were kind of forward thinking and trying to figure out, okay, what's the consumer need to be in a very desirable and attractive building and one that frankly that I would want to live in. So we kind of taken all these considerations and, you know, try to meet those demands and feel really excited about, you know, building this thing and delivering this on the market. And uh, to add on to that, uh, so I like building mid-rises. They're, they're an awesome puzzle and, uh, and, and they're multi-year. And so I love the challenge of getting all the decisions to come together uh, making the decisions uh, in the conditions that come up during construction and trying to make the best call for value uh, on the dollars you spend. Um, I, I like the combination of all of that and, the, and when it gets to the end, you create a product where people live. Uh, and what I find most fulfilling about that is it's, it's where people meet their future spouses. It could be your first launch into adulthood. You're moving into your first apartment. The older generations may be moving down, downsizing. Uh, it's just, it's where people live and make memories. And I can't think of too many things that, that you get to do that. Uh, so I think it's very yeah. fulfilling that way. For Apollo itself, um, as we see some of the migration moving northward from downtown core, uh, I think that Apollo is well positioned to be on kind of the, the start of the curve. So I think it's really great to be involved with something where you've got the neighborhood uh, evolving and building. Uh, and then, uh, as I was saying to Johnny, for the first time ever, uh, by happenstance, I think, uh, we're across the street from a, from a supermarket, which I think is just outright awesome. Uh, you know, you don't have to hop in a car to go get your groceries. If you ran out of a gallon of milk, just walk across the street and come back. Um, so I really like uh, the, the neighborhood for that. 
and uh, location for that. Uh, well, thank you for that. I can feel the passion from you guys, how you are excited about your project uh, and excited about bringing some value to the community. But you know, let's talk about performance a little bit. Maybe quickly just tell me, in that community, where do you see consistent rent growth? I mean, everyone, you know, it's been hard to try to factor in rent growth in the market today, but how do you see the rent growth in that market uh, and why? I mean, that's a, that's a very good question, Edward. So, um, you know, as we're slowly opening up the economy, uh, we're seeing a rebound in rent. So actually, as of last month, asking rents are back to pre-COVID levels in the area. And even though Seattle itself had large vacancy rates, the suburban markets, such as Edmonds, didn't really see a hit in vacancy. So, you know, that tells us that there's a high demand for quality assets. And, you know, in addition to the Apollo, you know, other developers and institutional investors have, you know, are pouring hundreds of millions of dollars of similar size investments in the area because this is where the growth is. Um, but kind of on that point as well is, uh, and one of the reasons why I like Apollo and Edmonds is that, you know, as I mentioned, we're close to all the major job centers, but we don't have to deal with the political nature of in, being in Seattle. So Seattle's got some tough rent control laws. They've got tough eviction laws that are tenant friendly. So we don't deal with that in Edmond. So we get all the benefits of being close to Seattle, close to the job market, but you know, having a building that is you know, fair to the owner, in my opinion. Yeah, I think also that you are close to the beach you're close to the university, uh, you're close to a lot of tech jobs, so there's going to be a lot of demand for residential apartments in that community, uh, especially for ones that are with a little bit of uh, luxury attached to them. So I really think that that's going to be beneficial to you guys. But let me just ask Andrew a question. Andrew, you've got a lot of experience in developing products uh, in your lifetime, and you know I'm curious, we all know that when you buy a land and you start developing, as you're adding value to land, you're actually reducing risk uh, on that project. Tell me what you're doing to reduce risk on the on this project since you bought the land. Sure. Uh, actually, there's a lot of things that we've done to date to mitigate risk. Um, a couple that come to mind. Uh, the project's already made it to entitlement risk. Uh, Edmonds has a design review uh, process and we've completed that already. A few other things. Uh, we did not uh, we did not bring this to the investment market until we actually had the project design. So we've worked through most of the major design issues. Um, we have brought on a, uh, a class A caliber uh, consultant team and uh, including a general contractor who's been uh, doing pre-construction services for, for nine months now. Uh, so we're, we're tackling all the basic design issues up front um, and then Trying to think of some more. I mean, it's got to be 10 different things we've been doing. Um, yeah, I mean, just, um, you know, I think one of the other big things is that, you know, the project will be utilizing HUD's 221D4 program. So, you know, one of the other big risks in the market right now is interest rate risk. And what the HUD loan provides is, you know, we're able to lock down that rate, you know, at closing. So we get a fixed rate, not just during construction, but that rate carries over when the project is stabilized. So in essence, you're looking at locking in an interest rate for 42 years. So you know, that's one of the big, you know, questions that are in the market. But you know, we're mitigating that by using the HUD program. Um, and we've also, you know, as a part of our project budget, we accounted for the current commodity pricing and lumber pricing. Um, so we've accounted for that. But we do believe that if we're tracked back, and if it does so, we could see potentially, you know, greater returns for the investor. Yeah, that uh, I agree with you. The HUD loan you have in place uh, is definitely a good arbitrage against interest rates moving up, which you know they will be, which puts you uh, in favor uh, in terms of one of the best, most profitable type of investments. You know, as interest rates are rising, you're going to be looking very comfortable with a steady fixed note from HUD. Uh, well, tell me this. You, a lot of investors are looking at you for the very first time, both of you. And, you know, they're wondering, why should I go to these guys as opposed to other uh, developers building projects uh, throughout the United States? What would you want to tell investors who are 
considering you as an investment uh, as equity, what would you tell them? To, what, would, what, what would you want them to know about you guys? You know, what I would say is that, you know, this general partnership team, we've got 40 plus years of real estate development and investment experience, over one and a half billion dollars worth of real estate development in the Seattle area. Uh, unlike other companies, we're not a national company that outsources their work locally. We're actually boots on the ground. And I think that's very valuable because, you know, we're, we know the building codes and the other requirements of the area, as well as we know the general contractors and the subcontractors that perform well. So this is a project that, you know, we're highly invested in personally from a financial standpoint, we're also invested in the community. So, you know, we're multi incentives to try to make this succeed. And, and Edward, I'd like to add a few things there. Uh, you're also getting Johnny and Andrew. And what Johnny brings to the table is uh, a voracious appetite for information. Uh, I, there are days I can't figure out how to keep up with Johnny. He, he knows everything about everything. But what that brings to you, Coming. Yeah, he's, yeah. One of the smartest guys you're going to find in real estate around here. In my mind, I've worked with a lot of people, and uh, I really like working with Johnny because he, if there's a trend, he's already ahead of it. I mean, look at where we're talking right now. Uh, tokenization. Um, yeah, Johnny, Johnny brought the project towards that goal, um, and uh, yeah, he brought me along with it. Uh, so that, that's just one of a thousand examples. Uh, the other thing you're going to get is. Uh, you would ask the earlier question, where do we live? We both live in Seattle. We're only a couple miles from the site. Um, and, uh, and if you do the math on something I said earlier, if it's 50 projects in 24 years, that's only a little bit more than two a year. I don't want to do a project where I can't personally invest my time in it uh, and be out on the site all the time. What I've learned over all those years is the more you're out there, uh, the more you can make sure that you catch things, uh, before they could possibly go off the rails or, or react to something that isn't quite going as planned. So we're going to be there uh, constantly on top of this project. And uh, it's in our nature. And, uh, and I like to say we're out there all the time so that as an investor, you don't have to be stressed. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm very glad that you guys brought up tokenization. Uh, I think that uh, you're both very wise to have selected uh, tokenization of your assets so that you can now provide a benefit to your investors. I think it, that just shows uh, that you are being very open-minded about you know, new technologies and new way of doing business to improve the relationship between yourself and your investors. By tokenizing the equity of your property, you're actually allowing the investors to be able to trade off their interest if they want to get out or um, to hold on to it long term, but they have that option to exit without having to come to ask you permission. So uh, just for you to be thinking, thinking about your investors in that way, to give them the option to have you know, liquidity on their investment uh, within, after their 12-month holdout period is phenomenal. That actually means that even before the project is built, they could have sold their shares to somebody that wants to pay them a higher price for it. Um, and I think that's a major, major advantage that uh, other developers uh, have not yet uh, started to take advantage of, but I see more and more are, and I'm really glad that you're bringing that uh, technology to uh, that technical market with lots of tech employees and, and residents. So good job to you guys. So Edward, if I could jump in there for a second. I I'm excited about tokenization for exactly the reasons you brought up. Um, I've financed a couple of projects in the past through some crowdfunding sites, but as we all know, uh, real estate's been pretty much an illiquid asset. It's really hard to sell your position. Um, I've invested myself in, in projects in other parts of the country through the same mechanisms. Tokenization, uh, exactly right. It brings the one missing element. If I want to, if I have a hundred thousand tokens and I want to get rid of 50,000, you know, we, we now can have an open marketplace where we can do that. I just think this was a long time in coming and I'm very excited we're at that day. Well, also the fact that it doesn't now put pressure on you to have to sell your property and get out just so you can turn to make a profit for your investors. You can stay in this property for the 40 years. You have a fixed, asset, a fixed debt on that property. So look at all your investors who are buying your, your security tokens and using those as collateral to do other types of def 
decentralized finance, they have a very stable asset with a very stable interest rate that's not going to change. That's going to be a, you know, a major benefit to them, and I think they're going to be very happy to, for the fact that you allow them to have this, I said, diversity. Like you said, they can sell part of their shares. They can actually trade their shares and make a higher yield off of their holdings with you. So there are many options that now they can take advantage of by being tokenized. So I'm looking forward to you know, owning shares myself of, uh, of Apollo, but also watching the benefit of you guys uh, as you, you know, develop this property, stabilize the asset, and continue building more assets in the, that uh, Seattle marketplace. So congratulations on the Apollo. Looking forward to working with you, getting this done, and have you back on the show to talk about your success. Thank you guys very much. Great. Thank you. Thank you.